So it's late May in my tropical style garden and now is the perfect time to do some pruning and it's a type of pruning that's earned the nickname of the Chelsea Chop. <laughs> Because it tends to happen around the same time of year that the RHS flower show, the Chelsea flower show, happens. Um, and this fits us in the UK, um, in the south of the UK especially. You may do this a little later if you're up in the cooler north of the UK or, or if you're growing your garden in parts of the world that have colder seasons and the heat takes a little bit longer. But generally we will do what I'm going to call the Chelsea chop after any risk of frosts has passed. Now the plant that I'm going to do it on today is this Persicaria runcanata and a cultivar called Purple Fantasy. And the Chelsea chop serves two purposes. Number one is to delay flowering. Now this herbaceous perennial does flower um, and by chopping it we are going to delay the flowers. But that's not why we're doing it on this plant. We're going to do it for the second reason to control shape and size of plants. Now, plants like this herbaceous perennial, meaning it grows from the ground every year and survives winter underground with its roots, they tend to grow in the heat of spring, tall and leggy. And this is just about the right height now. But in a week or two, it's just gonna fall over, flop over the path and not look anywhere near as nice as it does now. So, all I'm going to do is get my secateurs and I'm going to chop it back to about half the height it's at now. There's two ways you can do this. If you do it with shears, you're going to see a real flat, neat surface and it's not going to look very natural. So, by grabbing your secateurs and just grabbing a small bunch at a time and just chop, you're going to get different heights. It's not going to look as good as it did pre-chop, but it will look a little bit more natural. And I like my garden looking as natural as possible. And you can see that as we're chopping away here, what's going to happen is this persicaria will regrow. But rather than just growing from one tall stem, it's going to put out side shoots. So not only is it going to prevent it, from growing tall and leggy and falling over. It's also gonna encourage it to bush out, which will give us even more of this really cool exotic looking foliage. Now, this technique can be done on most herbaceous perennials. If you're growing them for foliage, you tend to do this to encourage more foliage and stronger growth. But if you're growing your herbaceous perennials for flowers, you're gonna do that to delay the flowering. Now a tip there, if you're doing it to delay flowering, is just to reach in and only cut back some of the shoots. That means you'll get the early season flowers on the ones you didn't cut. And once they've done, you can cut them back and you'll have all of the new shoots already developing to give you more flowers over a longer period in the gardening season. So you'll get loads more color for a few more weeks. There we go. So you can see I've kept a couple of growing tips here as they were, and I've cut this back. Now, it doesn't look as lush as it did, but that's absolutely fine. Plants like Persicaria and so many herbaceous perennials grow quickly because they have to grow from the rootstock in one season. And this will soon recover and it will be a much fuller plant and much less likely to fall over. Now, all of this doesn't have to go to waste. We've got some really nice thick stems here and we can use some of this material for cuttings. And plants like Persicaria root really easily in jars of water. So I'll show you how I do that now. Okay, in the shade of the greenhouse, it shows that the shade netting is really working. So in order to propagate your herbaceous perennial cuttings, or in the case of Persicaria, at least, you're gonna need a jar of clean water. This is where my love of mayonnaise pays off. And it's simple. We are going to find nice thick stem cuttings. So this one I'd say is a little bit too thin. Whereas this one is much thicker. And you can see the leaves are already wilting 
because the stems have been cut. So we want to do this as fast as possible. And to be honest, early in the morning is the best time to take cuttings because the plants are absolutely full of water that they've been taking up in the night time and the heat of the day has not yet dehydrated the plants at all. And this is why we actually cut away leaves. It reduces the surface area that this cutting material has, meaning that there's less water going to be lost from transpiration, which is that process of water evaporating from the leaves. And then I'm just going to cut this back to a node. So just there, because that's where growth hormones tend to be concentrated. So the cells there will be able to regenerate as roots. And I'm just going to put that into my jar and it's as easy as that. Now Persicaria is a relative of Japanese knotweed. It's in the same family. And as that will probably tell you, it's quite a vigorous plant. So these will root quickly. This piece just handily is already chopped at the node. So I'm gonna have more plants to pot on before very long at all, which is good. I grow tropical style plants because I'm an impatient gardener and I heard George from George's Jungle Garden recently say in one of his videos that patience is a bit of a dirty word in gardening and it is, but we all need to learn a bit. I understand it, I was thinking about this the other day. Most hobbies, let's say sewing or baking cakes, if something doesn't work out, you can try it again and again and again, maybe four or five times in a day. With gardening, we have one attempt every single season, every single year to get it right. One attempt at growing a set of plants, which is also my excuse for why I buy so many plants in a year, because the number of years I've got to do this are limited and unknown, so we just go for it, absolutely go mad. So I'm just carrying on, taking off all of the extra leaves, as I say, to reduce the amount of water that's lost from the stem cuttings. There we go. Now, if you do have any shoots that have a flower bud emerging from the top, the makeup, the cellular makeup and the hormones in that cutting material is likely to be focused on producing flowers. So just by nipping out the top of the plant and removing the flower, it will put the cutting materials focus back into regenerating stems and foliage rather than putting all of its energy into flowers. That goes for almost everything you take from cuttings. You don't really want to be taking cuttings from a material that's got flowers on it because before that material is trying to grow roots or stems, it's going to try and finish flowering. All right, because this plant's so vigorous, I think I've got all of the cutting material I need. There you go. And I will just leave that on the kitchen windowsill for, I imagine I'll start seeing roots on this within seven to 10 days. And within a couple of weeks, they'll be ready to pot on and I'll have more plants to do the Chelsea chop method with next May. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please hit subscribe. And don't forget, we've created a Grow Paradise forum and social network so that all of you can get free advice, ideas, inspiration, and share pictures so that we can support each other. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.